Hello everyone. Welcome back to Mary's Little House of Centerville, Illinois, United States of America. I am so grateful to welcome you from all over the world. I saw a bumper sticker this morning in the church lot. It said, God bless the whole world, no exceptions. And he does bless the whole world with no exceptions. He loves all of his his human family, everyone, no matter what culture, what where, where you are in the face of the earth, no matter what your status is, the color of your skin, your culture, everything, he blesses us all, no exceptions. So I repeat, God bless the whole world, no exceptions. So glad to have you back uh, uh, for your for a visit with me at Mary's Little House, Centerville, Illinois. So grateful to have you. Um, I, today, oh, I want to show. Oh, today I want to mention. Uh, for the last few days, uh, we've had deer come right down from the forest above. I, we live on the bottom of the bluff of the Mississippi Bluff, a soft bluff, not a rocky, craggy, but but a very soft tree-covered bluff. Uh, and they come down to, to Mary's uh, Mary's path. Uh, it's a it's a it's a power line easement, but they it, but it's kept real nice by the shrine above Our Lady of the Snow Shrine in Belleville, Illinois. It's kept very nicely um, a, a mode, and they come down and they come down uh, uh, into our backyard, Mary's little house backyard, in the front yard of uh, uh, our front yard and, and our neighbor's backyard that's in front of me. They they're just at home with us, uh, Peanut. When he sees him, one, one night he, he, he we, we saw him, we were eyeball to eyeball with him, and, and they just go watching us, and Peanut just stares, right to stare him down, too. But they didn't, they didn't, they didn't run. We, we, we were done with what we had to do and went in. They stayed there just watching us go in the house. So they're getting used to us. I talk gently to them and, and everything, and they, they didn't, uh, were skittish. They were, they were just standing there listening to my to my words for they were gentle words oh so 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 the deer have been really coming and during in broad daylight most of the time we see them after the sun goes down we can barely make them out we just see their silhouettes but peanut can smell them and and he gets excited and charges after them the other thing i wanted to share with you oh yes i I mentioned that I got a I needed a rosary, a cord rosary for driving in the car because I'm breaking my chain rosaries and the chain and wire rosaries on the steering wheel, getting them caught on the on the uh, the handles and everything. When I so my beloved dear sister, my oldest sister, I'm the oldest, but she's she's much more mature than I am, I think. Anyway, my oldest sister, I have four sisters and and three brothers. Four and four. Uh, anyway, um, uh, one brother is in heaven, my brother Joe, and the other two are still uh, making a dent in, in our world, making it a better world. Okay, this is the rosary Joyce sent me. She she it's it's it, it's violet. It's violet. It's a it's a it's a cord and it's got big it's like a feel them big beads are are knots for the for the. Uh, for the prayers, the Hail Marys and the Our Fathers, and uh, it's really wonderful. It's strong and everything, and I appreciate so much that Joy sent this. And it's my Lenten prayer. It's very appropriate because violet, violet is a, is a sign of penance, um, uh, uh, and the, what color, the liturgical color that the priest and deacon wear at the Eucharist, violet or purple, and so it's so so it's very appropriate. It's very, um, very means a lot to me because it's from my sister Joyce. Uh, so thank you, Joyce. And I want to share the, with the whole world of this beautiful rosary, this cord rosary. Thank you. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Today we really had a wonderful homily. We didn't know what the homilist was going to do. He, he walked out at the edge of the sanctuary and looking us right in the face, asked us some very... Um, um, Pointed questions. Uh, remember the gospel today for those who went to mass already. The, uh, are read the liturgical readings at home. 
uh, the the daily Lenten weekday masses is is from Matthew 25 uh, uh, 31 30, 46 tw chapter 25 verses 31 to 46 well you know it already it's this it's Jesus at the end we're going to be judged by how we love how we love others and and so he asked uh, he says what remember when Jesus said he separated uh, at the at the at the last judgment he separated the sheep and the goats and the sheep and the goats and uh, uh, and uh, on one side he told the sheep to, to, to come into my father's house inherit the king to prepare it for you from the creation of the world for I was hungry and you gave me food I was I was I was thirsty and you gave me drink I was stranger a stranger and you welcomed me naked and you clothed me I was still ill and you comforted me in prison and you came to visit me and then the just will say well when did we see you i mean jesus you're we read about you in the gospel we never saw you he says when you did it to the least of my brothers you did it to me so and then the, then the out the go to the goats oh my goodness uh the the, the, the goats uh, jesus had another thing the, then he uh, said to those uh, on his left out of my sight you condemned into that everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was away from home and you gave me no no welcome. Well, then it keeps on going. So the, the, the sheep go into heaven and the goats that didn't show love to the neighbor uh, goes into that awful place, uh, condemned into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Oh, bye. But I often, when I, I, I hear that it's beautiful when we do it to the least of our brothers, when we, we get a drink of water and, and offer it to a thirsty person. Uh, it might be a member of the family. Look at our moms and dads that get up to get their little child a drink of water. That's, you did, that's the least of my brother. You did it to Jesus. So that's so beautiful. But I always thought, I said, you know what? I know people that, that can't visit the prisons. They're, they're women and, and they're older. They don't have contacts with the chaplain. How could they go visit the prisoners? You know, uh, and, it, uh, and it's a prison's no place some pla time for, for, for women or something. I'm talking about the men. Oh, they could think maybe the women, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, there, a lot of people are not even thinking that way. We probably should. The, the social consciousness uh, maybe needs to be awakened, and I sure encourage because I tell, I tell everyone, the religious and everyone, to be renewed in the church. We have to turn to the poor, to Jesus and the poor. If we're not listening to the cry of the poor like the Father is, we're not listening to God either. Well, Jesus, this is a very, very hard gospel. Well, anyway, get back to this, this morning's Mass. The homo says, he asks, raise your hands if you've done, if you've, if you fed the poor, you brought food to the food pantry, and, and you, you brought clothes to the, to the thrift store, you, for the, you, you, you uh, welcome someone, you saw someone just that night lost, and you ask, welcome them and ask, can I help you? Raise your hand if you've done all these things. And everybody in the whole church raised their hand. And then he said, okay, thank you, thank you. You're, you're all, all sheep here. Okay, then he would say, now, is there any time that you ever didn't do that? You might have seen a stranger and you could have stopped and helped and shown the directions or give, given a little bit of change or, or, or you uh, could have uh, been, could have called someone, uh, see how they're doing, and you just neglected to do it or forgot to do it or whatever, just neglected to do it, maybe not purposely, but you weren't on the, your toes and and, and it said now give a show of hands if you if you forgot or did didn't do any of these things that you just did i mean and neglected to do or just didn't pay attention to do and all the, all the whole church again hello well, they raise their hands again you know they raise their hands again so he said and then he said okay don't isn't it true that we're neither completely a sheep or goats isn't it true that we that that we won't be condemned to hell just because we're not complete a sheep, but but we do have some goat in us. Those are he 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 said that 
those things, you know, that's what purgatory is for. In a way, he said, you know, those incomplete works, those works of omission, even though they weren't uh, blatant and, and overall we're, we're mostly sheep, we, we really are care about our brothers and sisters in need. Where there is some goat in us, there is some holding back in us, and and so he made it sound that not not to salve our conscience to neglect the poor, nothing like that, but that we in reality, and I never heard anything like this, and I, I thanked him afterwards. I said, Father, you nuanced this wonderful, challenging gospel uh, of of, treat, of of the poor, and we'll be judged on how we respond to the poor and those in need. This is what the people needed to know because either they walk out of church with a big, fat guilt guilt a feeling, which, which which inhibits us, and that's not the Holy Spirit. Uh, or they walk out sort of despairing that how can I live up to this? And so so Jesus embraces us in our imperfections, in our lack of. Um, uh, of our, of our, uh, sometimes our lack of responding to the poor, not not in a, a, a habitual way, not in a lifestyle way. What Jesus is really talking about the, those goats are people who just choose to to condemn the poor, to put them to to ignore them, to judge them, to 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 mean them by the way they look at them, to 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 uh, to uh, show a uh, uh, disrespect and. And and to uh, 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 talk about them horribly and 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 treat them inhumanly and and judge them what they get a job and all I'm sure things like that come to our mind but we don't we're not living that kind of lifestyle that's what he's talking about that's where the people go to hell is 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 this hardness of heart for those who are weak and little and vulnerable and need help and and so. So, so he's not talking about sometimes. Well, we could have stopped, or we, we were just too busy, or what was some weak, weak excuse. He's talking about the people who have chosen a lifestyle of closing themselves off to those in need. And I, I don't think anyone of you listening out there would want to like. You wouldn't be listening to this YouTube if you were like that. So, so we're not all sheep completely, but all, we're not all goat either. The all goats, the complete goats, who just shuts himself off from the poor and lives a lifestyle of conspicuous consumerism and doesn't give a, a, a hoot about uh, about others. That's the people that, that Jesus is talking about. And we pray for them. I, we see them in our society and things. And, and we shouldn't even judge them because we don't even know. They might have set up a foundation or done something. And that's going to be their salvation. Um, we say that uh, charity covers a multitude of sins, um, and I always pray for those who have lots of money and have celebrity and fame that they use that money and use that fame to help the poor. And it's so beautiful to see them. There's a lot of uh, people in Hollywood and people who are rich and things that help that, and that's wonderful. And I encourage them, and, and it's so beautiful to see that. But anyway, for us, what, what does it leave us off the hook? No. Where does it respond? When we see someone today in the, uh, the first reading, Moses said, when you see someone about to lose their life, go, you got to intercept. You've got to be a good Samaritan. He didn't say good Samaritan, but that was later on. Jesus told about the good Samaritan. That's what we are to do. Is, is this good man was dying on the road. We had to stop. We couldn't just go by him. You know, uh, like the priest and Levite did. They had to get the church on time to the temple on time. But we the most important is, is getting to that person and answering their needs and help. So so it calls us to, to be very gentle and very loving and very generous with the poor when we can. Not a guilt trip. I'm sorry. Guilt trips are not from the Holy Spirit. They could help us get our get off our off our chair, our easy chair, but uh, but that if that's that's good but but not to do things out of guilt, but out of love and trust that God will help us. And when we do it over, so we overextend ourselves, He will give us the means to, to provide for our own needs. Uh, God will never be outdone in generosity. I, I've seen this in generous people, even in my life, and I'm, I struggle. I, 
Cindy was so generous and I was such a Grinch um, worried about the the bottom line but Cindy wasn't and she just lived divine providence and we always made it we always paid our bills we had some close ones but we always made it God will never leave us unprovided for when we love his little ones God bless you now God bless the whole world no exceptions and that's you God blesses each of you God bless you